welcome to another episode of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from Marty and Danielle in the Morning on 91X. As always, I have my beer drinking partner in crime with me, Paul Segura, brewmaster of Carl Strauss Brewing. And we are stoked to welcome Bill and Zach from California Wild Ales. What's up, guys? How are you? Aloha. Good to have you guys on the show. Yeah, I know we haven't had you guys on in a while, and uh, there's so much to catch up on. You guys have been really making a name for yourselves and doing it, but let's kick things off with the Pineapple Upside Down Cake, a 4.9% ABV sour ale. Tell us all about this guy. Uh, so this one was kind of, uh, we started making pastry sours because everyone's having fun with the pastry stouts. So we started doing, we started with a peach cobbler and then it kind of turned into a cherry cobbler. And then we have been talking about the pineapple upside down cake for almost a year before I said, I've had enough talking about it. Let's just make this thing already. Uh, so we uh, started trying to figure out how to deconstruct a pineapple upside down cake and uh, took a grilled pineapple, dusted with brown sugar, grilled it, and then made homemade maraschino cherries. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's definitely a labor of love, but mm -hmm. it came out really good. So we've made it three or four times now since. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it started out the first time we debuted. It was actually at Festival of Funk. And we had a huge line, which was just amazing to see. I even remember some of the staff coming over and they were like, right, we got to try it. You're the longest line at the place. And so it's been a huge, huge success ever since. And now it's a beer week beer, so our next uh, version of it will come out at some point during uh, San Diego Beer Week, which we're happy to have back, obviously, after oh, yes. last year. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers so, to that. Cheers. So so what's your thoughts on it, uh, Paul? What do you think? I love this, man. Um, so just like the whiff of it got me all excited. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, I totally get like the pineapple right off the bat. Yep. And um, I didn't. Um, I was like, what else is in there? And I was trying to figure out, I got like the peach and like the stone fruit thing. But when you said mar maraschino cherry, I went, that's it. Um, so, we do that. so we do that. We just pit the cherries and simple syrup and then allspice, uh, cinnamon, vanilla. Uh, what else goes in there? Uh, uh, sarnese. There's definitely some sarnese in there, some almond. Uh, yeah, so it's got a lot of uh, a lot of different flavors going on. There. Yeah. So, so you guys are using fresh fruit. You're not like using puree or something that's prepackaged. You're actually doing right. this to the fresh fruit. Wow. And because you know, so there are very very nice maraschino cherries that are too expensive to ever make a decent quantity of beer with, and then there's the ones that I'm. Uh, not proud to say how much I like them, but the ones that are <laughs> the just at the ones. bar, the bright red ones, but those aren't, <laughs> those aren't going in our beer. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so we actually make our own, like Bill was saying, we pit them and then he makes the reduction with all of it. So we actually make the reduction, the simple syrup ourselves and we let them sit and then it goes into the beer. So yeah, all fresh fruit, like you're saying. Um, yeah, we, we peel and, and basically make into steaks, all the pineapple and grill them ourselves as well. It's a... Uh, yeah, definitely a labor of love, but it's totally worth it. And it's, you know, we love doing it every year, but we only do it once. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, thank it's a you. Tasty one. Yeah. So it was mm. cool seeing you guys when you guys came down the other day just to kind of try through some beers and stuff and check out the new location. Uh, it's a definitely a different animal than our other place in Sorrento Valley. You know, there's a lot more traffic and a lot more people just passing by whereas the other one they're coming directly for the sours so um we kind of opened up a little bit to have a few more beer flavored beers on uh ipa hazy lager and pale ale right now so. yes yeah, so you guys are open in ob uh for anybody that doesn't know where you're located where exactly are you so we're at 4896 newport avenue we're right on the corner we're uh right across the street from the joint which is an awesome place to get uh sushi and tapas in town hey travis uh, <laughs> and uh you know, it, it's been great. I mean, we haven't even really put a sign out front yet, so it's almost been kind of like a locals bar for everyone at OB, which has been awesome because um, this neighborhood is rad, so mm -hmm. we're just trying to do it justice. The total soft opening, not even a sign up yet, and there's like yeah. there's yeah. Still a lot of great people in there. Yeah, we've had a great crowd too, so it's been it's been fun. Mm -hmm. So, what do we have to expect out of the OB location? You know, we were talking about it a little bit while we were there. Well, it's going to be just. 
more hours, right? So open seven days a week. So the weekdays from Sunday to Thursday we're open, twelve to ten, and then Friday, Saturday, twelve to midnight. Um, we're going to be having a live show streaming. I know I was talking all about streaming uh, electric waistband on Mondays on the projector. So we're going to have live concerts whenever possible. We stream a lot of uh, couch tour and fish shows and things like that, or just old archive shows that are just amazing. So we have those on as well. So trying to do those after sunset every night. That's so rad. That's so OB. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It was cool seeing you at the Electric Waste Beer Show uh, or Electric Waste Band Show. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like we, run, we run in similar circles, beer and good music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have good taste. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Paul, you, you, most people that watch this show regularly probably know this, but you're not a bad musician yourself. Well, thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say to that, but thank yeah. you. Uh, no well, Danielle already yeah. finished her bottle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I hopped into the next one just because I couldn't help myself because look at this color. Like, look, I know we're not supposed to drink beer with our eyes, but I will drink this beer with my eyes all day long. This is a beautiful shade of like, like Q red pink. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I always say you kind of already know you've made up your mind on your beer before you even taste it because you see the color and you're like, wow, that's gorgeous. And you kind of smell it before that. And your mind's going, Oh, I'm either going to love this or I'm going to hate this. So it kind of, Ooh, I love it. So I'll let Zach talk about this one because um, we have a friend of ours up in Escondido mm -hmm. where we handpick all the grapes every year. Yeah. So you got these pets, huh? yeah. So uh, her name is summer and she has a small vineyard on her property where we were lucky enough to meet her and she allows us to come up and uh, pick through um, some of the grapes while she's harvesting them to make uh, her own wine out of them as well. Um, this particular mm. one, so we made a beer we called Rosé, which was made with Zin grapes from the same vineyard. This was the first time we got the Cab Franc grapes, Sebastian. which we were very excited. Yeah. Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. Um, so yeah, th this particular year, she didn't have enough yield to justify turning them into a wine. So mm -hmm. Zach and uh, one of our other guys went up there and handpicked about two or 300 pounds of Cab Franc grapes. Yep. And so mm -hmm. the difference between this, the slight difference, I should say, my different grape as well, but the difference between this and any other grape beer that we made is this is the first time, for probably obvious reasons, that I went through and actually de-stemmed every single grape. Oh, wow. With help, with help, I should say. There was help. But this is the first time I actually went ahead and did that. And uh, I, I love the result, which I guess means I have to do that every time now. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So hopefully as we're growing, I've seen, I, it was a video of a friend of mine in the industry. And there, you know, there are machines that do this. So hopefully we get there before I have to do a whole lot more grapes or anything like that. But Zach, yeah. I will say the amount of time and care that you guys are putting into the product that you have really shines through in the product itself. There's definitely no cutting corners. And the more that you explain everything your process is, I'm totally understanding why I'm loving your sours. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that we're definitely glad to hear it's paying off because mm -hmm. we like doing it. But uh, yeah, we're just glad to see that the product shows that and it's, you know, it's really paying dividends. And it just, I, I'm, yeah, I'm with you there. Just fresh, fresh product is, is, is as good as you're going to get. So, and Danielle, I think uh, when we did our first interview, you were like, I'm not a sour girl, I'm a hop girl. So, it's good to see you're coming around <laughs> to the place. Yes, I'm, I'm, starting, I'm starting to round out my palate. It's very exciting. <laughs> and Paul, you had some of our wine beer when you were last time, the Echoes of Grenache, too. Yeah, that was amazing, man. Um, so, like, anybody who doesn't know, who hasn't been there, there's, like, 20 beers on tap, and I think the first 10 or 11 were all sour beers. And then there was, like, the other beers were legit. There were some really good IPAs on there and something for everybody on tap that was really good. So even if you're not a sour beer person, there's something on tap for you um, there. And we'll definitely give you a splash of sours if you come in and aren't really into sours because – it's kind of our mission to kind of get people to at least appreciate them a little bit. Maybe you're going to walk away going, I still don't like him, but now I know this took X amount of time and fresh fruit and all the effort. So then you kind of at least appreciate it a little bit more. 
Yeah. I would say there's definitely a, a time and a place, and I'm evolving into really, really enjoying them. Also, the lower ABV, not such a bad thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Summertime drinks, you, know, yeah. you have a couple in the sun, you can yeah. still go swimming without, uh, you know, getting sucked mm -hmm. out by the undertow here. Yeah. Okay. Does this one have a little Britannomyces in it? Um, mm -hmm. It does, and it's also got the naturally occurring yeast on the skin of the grapes. So there's okay. probably some naturally occurring bread on there as well. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. find that with a lot of our grape beers, they've got a lot of that natural yeast on it. That, although I will tell you, I think that characteristic that I'm now getting might be a little bit new. That might be something that's come in the bottle over the last okay. few months here or whatever. Because that, yeah, that kind of Brett funk that probably did come from the grapes. Because we use Brett to ferment all of our beer, but it doesn't shine through quite like this is. Um, and so, yeah, that's really interesting that you, that you caught that and everything. And that might actually be something that's naturally occurring in the bottle as we speak. So it could continue to go that way. Yeah, because it was even a little bit more deeper tannic, like wine character, probably like a month ago. Something yeah. along those lines. I like that little bit of bread character in there. It yeah, gives too. another element of, of, I don't know, uh, flavor and aroma. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this one's not as tart. This one's not as tart as the previous one. Mm -hmm. Um, pineapple does get a little uh, acidic, you know. That's why we like to do the grilled pineapple because it kind of mellows it out a little bit. Um, I don't even know if we really even do a straight pineapple really much anymore. We have done it once, but it's not something that we do very often. We stick to the grilled a lot, yeah. Yeah, the caramelization on the grill and then the brown sugar kind of lends a little bit more sweetness and depth. These are both really interesting, really well made beers, very well thought out and executed uh, cool. but then uh, there was nothing i had at your place uh and i had i think we tried everything <laughs> yeah went the whole the whole menu <laughs> we all left pretty smiley that's awesome yeah. i left all behind i was like bye paul <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i left paul too you were still here i don't know how many <laughs> <laughs> uh you guys i just want to say the first time you came on Beer for Breakfast, you guys had just opened. You were still kind of in the midst of like building a place for people to actually drink in the Serrano Valley area. I remember every time I'd come by, like there was like a, like, like a new section to sit in. And now to see the OB location opening up and the more varieties coming out and just how good your sours are coming out. I'm just so stoked to have been able to see like from the beginning and the growth that California Wild Ales has had like cheers to you guys you should be really proud of what you've done cheers really appreciate that it means a lot coming from you guys I, I've been watching you for a while Paul I've been drinking your beer for freaking forever so yeah really thank you so much the OB community how um, we kind of put some feelers out to ask people for I mean you can see the, the gorgeous wood in the background these are all fences, pallets, and old boards that I put a post out on Social Ocean Beach and drove around meeting neighbors and collecting wood. And then we did the same thing again to collect uh, Legos and pennies. And basically through that, I built a, <laughs> built this place on uh, wood, Legos, pennies, and uh, some old mirrors. So, uh, that is so awesome. It's very community oriented. Yeah. Yeah, it was great to see the community really get involved. And, you know, this OB is, is definitely that kind of community. I remember Bill was telling me he would show up in the morning and there would just be pennies like scattered about the floor from people that would just slip them in the mail slot, you know, while we were collecting <laughs> pennies and things like that. So it was, it was beautiful. Everybody just wanted to get involved. And that's so, I mean, it's so OB. If, yeah. You know, if any other, if any other beach down here, it's just awesome. And the community here is just amazing. We hired mostly... We got the Locals, dream team. So yeah, we got the CWA dream team down here mm -hmm. of uh, basically poached all our favorite beer tenders, and and then we got Sebastian. And then Sebastian. Too. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Paul, would you like to leave any words with Bill and Zach before we say goodbye? I'm a, I'm a huge fan of these guys and what they're doing, man. Um, I like their whole place is is super comfortable, but it's nice also. Um, like. You go into the bathroom and everything is clean and professional and nice and like it's got a comfy OB feel and the atmosphere and everything and the vibe, but it's also just like a genuine nice place to go. And you guys are making some of the best beer in San Diego, I think. Um, I'm a, I am a sour fan. I have been for a while, and I've I've gone and had days at like Crooked Stave and other places and. 
And your beer hangs with anybody's. Your beer is right there. And um, I'll take that. Thank that's you. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Rad to, to have you guys in our backyard. We're Thank spoiled. You. Thank you. <laughs> Agree. Bill and Zach, what would you like to leave the peoples with? Well, one sec before we go, because I did want to talk about a special beer we're doing for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, yeah. which is near and dear to uh, Zach's heart. So we're just going to showcase it really quick. Um, yeah. We're doing an event here on June 13th? Um, the 15th. It's Tuesday. 15th. So yeah. Tuesday the 15th. Um, so the reason this is so close for me is when I was 15 years old, this is a long time ago now, but I lost my mom to leukemia. So this beer, um, we, uh, we made for her, uh, this is RJB is her initials. It was, uh, Rebecca Young Rice Brigger. And, uh, so this beer is special to me. This is the very first beer that we ever, um, conditioned the beer before packaging with bread. So kind of like we were talking about with the cat trunk, but I added a specific strain with this. It's the first time I ever did this, which is why it's super special to me. And so I wanted to use this for this cause. Uh, we did a fundraiser at Sereno Valley, and it raised over $1,000. I've been helping a friend who's running for Man Woman of the Year. And so we're using uh, California Wild Ales here as a platform, which we're happy to do. Uh, one last fundraiser on the 15th in OB. Um, all the tips are going to be donated, and then 15% of all the bottle proceeds are being donated to LLS. And it's perfect timing because... The whole world thing. is opening up. Yeah, the whole yeah. world's opening up, and also the uh, competition ends. Even though if all the money goes to LLS, they raise it as a competition just because human nature allows that to people really raise so much money. So it's such a good cause, um, and uh, it ends on the twentieth. So yeah, it's perfect it. timing for everybody to come out and you know just show your support if you want to. And uh, the beer will be on tap, and we're going to tap some uh, other special beers as well. Um, and yeah, it should be, should be great. So yeah, thank you for letting us get that in at the end. It means a lot. I appreciate it. And that's June 15th at the OB location. Yeah, June 15th at the for OB sure. location. Yeah. Awesome. Where, um, for anybody that wants more information or details, what's the best way to keep up with not only that event, but everything going on with California Wild uh, Ales? Instagram, probably just follow us on Instagram, just her name at California Wild Ales, uh, or any social media, or just give us a call. We'll let you know. Mm-hmm. We do have an email list as well, and for events like that, we will definitely uh, get an email out to anybody we can as well. So, yeah, you can sign up for that on our website, too. Awesome. Well, Bill, Zach, thank you so much for joining Paul and I for Beer for Breakfast ABV. It was so great to catch up with you guys. And uh, remember, Friday morning, we have Beer for Breakfast on the radio on 91X at 910. Paul Segura will call in to myself and Marty on the morning show, and we will be drinking California Wild Ale. So please join us Friday morning, 910 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And cool. cheers to independently owned craft beer and radio in San Diego. Cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers.